All right, guys, welcome back. We are going over how to calculate line drop and line loss of a circuit in this video. So we've got a problem here that says a motor is drawing 13 amps. It's 200 meters away from a power source. It's connected with number 10 aug copper wires at 20 degrees Celsius. Calculate the line drop and the line loss of the circuit. So it gives a lot of information, but it's also not giving a few things. It doesn't tell us whether the supply is AC or DC. It doesn't say even what the supply voltage is, only the current and the distance away. Um, but this is pretty typical of these kind of problems. They're often given to you as a word problem, and you're probably going to have to draw the circuit and try to figure out what's going on with it. So for this problem, the circuit is going to look basically like this, where we have our source of power, um, and then there's 13 amps of current flowing through. Our motor is 200 meters away, and often this is a trick question because the, we have a wire here that's 200 meters long, and we have a wire here that's 200 meters long. So we have 400 meters of wire that we're trying to find the voltage drop across and the power loss across. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, now, depending on what other information you're given with the problem, we're told that it's number 10 aug copper at 20 degrees Celsius. And so you probably have a table, you're at, you either have a table or you're expected to know some of the following values. Uh, one of the values that you might be given is just the resistance of a number 10 aug wire at um, 20 degrees Celsius for a certain length, and that it would be just 3.270 ohms per 1,000 meters. So <laughs> that's not an M, uh, meters. So if you're given this number or you have a table that it's in, cool. Uh, what you want to do with this is you want to find out uh, either how much resistance 400 meters or 200 meters would be. If you do 200 meters, you just have to double it afterwards. It's fine. Um, so starting with that, we could um, we can divide 3.27 divided by 1,000 meters, and that's going to give us 0 0.00327 ohms per meter. And then what you want to do is you want to times that by 200 meters. And we're going to find out that our resistance per 200 meters would be 0 0.654 ohms. So something that's kind of nice to do in problems like this is you actually just want to kind of draw in some resistance here on the line just to remember that they're actually, they're not considering these, these conductors to be totally ideal, like they actually have some resistance and that is the point of the problem. So for the 200 meters on top, we would have 0 0.654 ohms and for the 200 meters on the bottom we'd have 0 0.654 ohms or we can double that for the total circuit. Now if you're not given this number 3.270 ohms per thousand meters you might be given other table values or expected to know other table values. Um, the alternative way to come about to, to get to this answer would be to know this equation where resistance is equal to resistivity times the length of the conductor divided by the cross-sectional area. So maybe this formula looks familiar to you, um, or maybe some of these values have been provided as well, or you've been told you're expected to know, for example, the resistivity of copper at 20 degrees Celsius or the cross-sectional area of certain uh, aug sizes. Uh, either way, I'll just write them out for us here. And just so you know, these are pretty much table values, but the resistivity of copper at 20 degrees Celsius is 1.72 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meters. In this case, we're going to just do 200 meters at a time, so we'll multiply that by 200 meters. And we need to divide this by the cross-sectional area, and the cross-sectional area of number 10 aug is 5.26 millimeters squared, but this, this needs to be in meters squared, so we can cancel out these and get um, our resistance in terms of ohms only. So 5.26 millimeters squared is just 5.26 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. Just divide 5.26 millimeters squared by 1,000 twice, and you're going to get this number and the correct units. Anyways, so if you were to crunch this number times this number divided by the, the bottom down there, you're going to get exactly the same thing. So it's going to be 0 0.654 ohms per 200 meters. And again, that's the resistance of the top line and also the resistance of the bottom line. So up until this point, we've just found the resistance of the conductors now. 
but the first part of the question was asking us to find the line drop. Now, line drop refers to voltage. It's actually just asking the voltage drop of the line or of the conductor. So we're just going to apply Ohm's law, V equals IR. And we have the current. It was given to us in the problem. It's 13 amps. And the resistance we found for each line is going to be 0 0.654 ohms. And that's just 8.5 ohms. So that is the voltage drop of this conductor. And it's also the voltage drop of the bottom. So if we just want to multiply that by 2, uh, we're going to see that we've got 17 volts in total voltage drop for the circuit. Or that's what we call line drop. That's not talking about the voltage drop across this load. And actually, we don't know what that is because we don't know what the source voltage is. But certainly, with this amount of current going through these wires, with this amount of resistance, we do know the voltage drop, or the line drop is what we're calling that. So pretty much regardless of the applied voltage, uh, the source voltage, we're going to be dropping 17 volts up across these conductors as long as 13 amps is flowing through the circuit. So if this was a 120 volt circuit, like this is just a single phase uh, line going out to a pump or something out of 200 meters on your property, for example, uh, think about it this way. We have 17 volts. If we divided that by 120 volt, assuming that was the supply voltage, we're looking at about 14.7% uh, of of voltage loss in these lines and that is probably problematic for a load because that load would be certainly not getting close to 100%. It's 14.7% less. If this was something else, if it was like a 600 volt system, uh, maybe like something related to solar as those are often running at that voltage, then a 17 volt drop over a 600 volt supply uh, then we'd be looking at, let's say, 2.8% drop, and that might actually be satisfactory. It depends on the, the local restrictions or whatever your goal is, but a 2.8% voltage drop is, is more desirable than a 14.7%. But the problem didn't give us the source voltage, so it doesn't really matter. It's just kind of something to talk about. Um, now, that's line drop, 17 volts of line drop. Now we want to talk about line loss. And loss is always referring to power. So drop refers to voltage, loss refers to power. So we're talking about how much power are we losing due to this resistance in our lines. So we're just going to simply use one of our power formulas. And in, the squared is, in this case, it's just going to be I squared R. You might hear about people talking about I squared R losses, and that's exactly what this is. It's the power loss due to the current and the resistance. Um, so we can just plug in the values that we have. We have the current. It is 13 amps we're going to square that and we're going to multiply it by the resistance and so I'll just do one line each you could do the whole circuit at once if you want uh, so we have 0 0.654 ohms and uh, we're gonna get a value of 110.5 watts in each line or we can multiply that by 2 for the entire circuit and we're gonna get 221 watts for the entire circuit so that answers the question. The line drop is 17 volts for the whole circuit, and the line loss is 221 watts for the whole circuit. Now, just going to hypothetically go a little bit further here with this 120 volt versus 600 volt example. Um, let's assume if we have the 120 watt circuit, and we're talking about the power. So power is equal to voltage times current. And at 120 volts, we would have, well, 120 volts times 13 amps. So we'd be looking at uh, 1,560 watts of total input. And again, if we're losing 221, well, 221 divided by 1,560 is going to give us that uh, 14 point something percent which again is probably not great uh, in real life. And uh, if we were looking at maybe a 600 volt circuit instead, then we would say, okay, well, we have 600 volts times 13 amps. So our total circuit input is going to be 7,800 watts. And we're losing 221 of those. So 221 divided by 7,800 is again, it's like that 2.8% which might be within the tolerance of what is acceptable to us.
So you'll find in, in real life, if you have long distances that you need to supply power you know, to something that's far away, um, the longer you go, the more resistance you're going to have. Um, because even here in this formula, you can see resistance is directly proportional to length. The longer you have of the same conductor, the more resistance you're going to get. So what you'll end up seeing is people upsizing the cross-sectional area of the conductor, which is the denominator in this expression, and these are inversely proportional. So the bigger the denominator here, the smaller this number gets. So the bigger the wire, or like the, the bigger cross-section of the wire, the less resistance we're going to have across the same length. So if this was a 120 watt circuit, um, maybe what this person might consider doing is instead of using a 10 aug wire, maybe upsize it to like an eight or a six or something like that until it gets into the tolerance that they're looking for.